Shakes, shaking, and voices coming out of heaven, and they said, give us, give us a human voice. Give us somebody like you, Moses, that can tell us God's truth. And God said, well, yeah, we can do that. He says, I will raise up prophets, people who speak my truth, um, and we'll go that way. People were pretty pleased. It seems that God was just too awesome, God's voice too overwhelming. What they wanted was that human voice, that go-between. Now, that's a good deal, but it raises some questions that we still wrestle with, things like this. What about those who claim to speak for God without God's permission? What about those who speak for God, are to speak for God, but they fail to do so? What about those who hear God's word but fail to listen, right? Or even a bigger question, how are we to know the difference? How are we to know who speaks for God and who is deceiving us, right? You might not like the answer that the Bible lesson gives. The Bible says it works this way. You will know who is telling the truth when what they are saying comes true or not. How can you know who gives the faithful word? Hindsight. Mm. I wrote a note here that says what we need is foresight because what we want is insight and what we are left with mainly is hindsight. How's that working out for us, right? I'm going to tell you the tale of two pastors. Two voices to show you the challenge that I know we all face when it comes to discovering, well, who's telling us the truth? This one hits pretty close to home. True story. One of the pastors is Lutheran. The other pastor is evangelical. One of the pastors is an uncle. The other pastor is the uncle's nephew, right? Now, both pastors believe that God seeks our engagement in daily life. Both pastors believe that our citizenship calls us to live out the command to love our neighbor. But they go in two different directions. So who are you going to believe is trying to tell you the gospel truth, right? The nephew left his ministry for a time, he's come back to it, in order to become a politician. So he ran for an office and got it uh, the second time uh, as a state legislator. He supports the former president's policies. He believes him to be God's chosen man for the time. He's willing to look past personal faults and moral failings and falsehoods. Nobody's perfect, he says, because this person supports the right policies on abortion, on immigration, on the border wall, on tax breaks, and he has a great time ridiculing the lying liberal press. He says his Christian faith leads him to support the former president, now candidate, and he believes that your faith should lead you in the same direction. That's one voice. Now the uncle, who I know loves his nephew, the uncle believes faith in Jesus leads us in the opposite direction. That the former president, now candidate, is singularly unfit for the job. That his behavior and policies go against just about every biblical teaching imaginable and that his previous and proposed policies are a tragic rejection of the gospel message, to love and serve and care for every neighbor, regardless of color, status, ethnicity, identity, country of origin. The uncle believes that his faith leads him to dismiss the former president's person and policies and believes perhaps that your faith should lead you to do the same. Does that sound like any of your family arguments over Thanksgiving? Right? So why, why this touchy kind of story? Well, remember, 
In Deuteronomy, God promised to raise up truth tellers. And then we have to sort out just who it is we're going to believe. Either, neither, right? The last time, 70 million people believed what the nephew believed. And 80 million people believed what the uncle believed. But it's not a matter of numbers, and it's not a case of winners or losers, right? Who speaks a gospel truth? Because God is the God of truth, right? I said what we need is foresight, what we want is insight, what we're left with is hindsight to know what a faithful word is and what is not. What is true is important because God is the God of truth. You need to know that because your faith and your behavior and your choices in this life matter for you and for others. Now, there's a couple little guides maybe that we can give. I think the Apostle Paul in his letter talks about our newfound freedom in Christ, right? We have freedom to do much of anything. But he offers a gentle caution. He holds us as a faith community to an awfully high standard. And he says that concern for others overrides personal, individual preferences. Paul says, take care that this freedom, this liberty you have in Christ, he says, well, make sure that your words and your deeds do not become a stumbling block for the weak. It's important, he says. Here's a little warning. It's important. When you sin against folks like that, you sin against Christ. So I have something like, Our rights and our freedom and our privileges give way to whatever builds up, whatever strengthens, whatever serves the larger community, especially the weak among us. Says that in all of our words and deeds, we're to think us all and not just me, because all of us are in this life and faith together. And to remember whatever our choices are, in the freedom we have to make choices, Our neighbor's needs are of a primary concern, right? So remember that as you listen to anyone who claims to speak the truth, to speak God's truth in particular. So what and whom are you going to believe? Here's another guy. If the message you hear does not fit with the gospel, don't believe it. If the actions being called for don't fit with the gospel message to love and care for every neighbor, don't follow along. If those who speak allow their words to be built on lies and falsehoods that bring harm and not good, don't fall for them, right? As people of faith, you and I have been invited to use that gift of hindsight to help us gain insight so that by foresight, We can make choices that fit with the gospel message we already know and are being given, right? Well, at least believe this. In Jesus' love for all people, remember Jesus has command over even unclean spirits among us. Believe that they too finally will obey Jesus and the gospel. And we are to believe that we need not be frightened by such spirits anymore. I think that's the gospel and the gospel's truth. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes our heart and mind, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.